we've learned, Bob, and I'm talking to Bob uh, from NREX, now that we've learned that schools or most of the schools in the state are going to be wor working or learning remotely, do we think this is going to change the dynamic when it comes to our roadways coming up this fall? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So as you mentioned, you know, is certain school districts are doing distance learning or some sort of a hybrid uh, model. So um, I think we can expect less traffic than in years past. You know, normally we do see some back to school traffic, uh, but you know, the morning commute still is, I mean, we're pretty far down from where we should be. And right. so anybody that's added to the roads in those mornings will likely see a quicker commute still uh, than last year. You know, and it's so interesting because, I mean, if you go back and you look at weather, and we've had, we've had a few days, you know, in the past that have been a little iffy when it comes to a little rain, mist, drizzle, and whatnot. And we've seen some pretty significant backups. I'm not talking pre-COVID levels, but it's enough to kind of make you go, hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So the one area where we're not lagging as much is in that evening commute period, mm -hmm. as well as some off-peak time. So people either getting out of town or going to enjoy the weather. Um, that's a little bit closer to normal, though, than that morning commute. So, yeah, we will see, especially around some of our hot, around these hot spots in the region, um, you know, kind of your typical uh, traffic areas, as well as in West Seattle, obviously. So we have other factors playing into right. it as well. Um, but that, so that morning commute, though, is lagging a little bit more than those other periods of the day. And so it's likely that with, especially with, as you mentioned, schools, uh, being affected by uh, COVID-related shutdowns, as well as companies in the area extending work from home policies, uh, that morning commute is probably going to be uh, the least impacted, I would say, from, from traffic growth over the next uh, couple of months. So let me ask you this, because from one traffic expert to another, you know, what is it and why is it different in the afternoon compared to the morning? Yeah, the afternoon commute, that, that's an excellent question. So the afternoon commute is a big combination of people taking trips for different reasons. So we have, um, you know, obviously some school related stuff with UW and others. We have people leaving work. Uh, they tend to leave work at about the same time, uh, not necessarily show up at the same time, but a bunch of other trips too, like shopping trips and other type of uh, leisure activities that aren't really done at around eight in the morning typically. Uh, so we do see a lot more people on the roads during that evening commute period than we than we do in the morning. It's so interesting because I would say over the last couple of weeks or so, Bob, I've seen the commute really for the afternoon really start to pick up around two and really be gone by six. And in past, before COVID, we saw it really ramp up around two, but really not fizzle out till after 730. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's an excellent point, too. So, I mean, even in some places, we may be reaching that same level of traffic congestion. Uh, it's not going for as long. It's not that four-hour, five-hour peak that we're used to sitting on 405 or I-5. Um, instead, it's been somewhat shortened to maybe an hour, hour and a half, uh, and then it starts to dissipate again. Now, as cars start to come back on the road, we will likely see that commute period um, start to expand. and and also, as we come into the fall, uh, we have this thing called rain in the in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> I'm and glad so you said that. Weather, weather will also play a role uh, as we move forward. And another thing that I have noticed, I would say, since we've talked, is the ferries. Like our Washington State ferry wait times have been unbelievable. Yeah, so um, I haven't been tracking that as much, but I do know that there are obviously with uh, the COVID response, um, staffing is al almost, you know, can almost always be an issue right. uh, for ferries if someone calls in sick. We we know about canceled ferries and delayed ferries in our region. So I think that's a, a staffing issue. Um, but also as we move forward, it could be more of a funding issue as well with some of the state revenues down. Uh, so we'll have to take a look at how that impacts uh, ferries to to a lot of our island destinations and across the water. So when I work with NREX, we work together, we collect the data and then, then we bring it to you every morning. But we also work together in the sense that, you know, Bob, when we look into our crystal ball going into the fall, you know, 
it just, like you had mentioned, it all kind of depends on where we move when it comes to phases and whether or not we end up rolling back or if we move forward. What does NREX see moving into the fall? Yeah, we've definitely seen um, as obviously, <laughs> as places open up, there tends to be more traffic. Um, that, that's a little bit uh, trickier, I think, here in the Pacific Northwest. We're right by the mountains. Is you know We've got a, a little bit different geography uh, than a lot of places with uh, different destination types. So going to the mountains for recreation or going to Eastern Washington or going out to the islands in Western Washington, we're, we're, we have a very diverse uh, geography out here. Uh, so yes, but as one county may open up or another may be rolled back, uh, that may affect how people travel and where they go to access things. So for example, um, I know some people, uh, you know, in the Spokane area, cross the border to Idaho to access certain things because they're at a different level than Spokane is. Right. And so we might see some of that kind of cross county or uh, cross mountain travel, uh, depending on the different phases that we're in. Okay. So, well, I mean, I guess it all clearly depends on where we are when it comes to COVID. And that's kind of what it has been since March. We just kind of hang in the balance. But since, you know, we don't really, we know that the kids are going to be working and, and learning remotely. But when it comes to our major companies, Bob, like Boeing and, you know, and, and even as SeaTac for that matter, they're going back to work. And I'm not really seeing much when it comes to a change in their kind of traffic. Yeah, so no, that and that's an excellent point. So I think especially, uh, uh, as I said earlier, in the morning commute, you know, adding a few people here and there, it's not having that large of an impact yet. So once it reaches a certain point, adding that additional car or two on the road has a much bigger impact on traffic. So uh, as you mentioned, as we kind of open up, we're taking it slow. Um, but as, uh, you know, businesses and hotels open up and hopefully, you know, there's a little bit more economic activity, we will start to see that traffic return. And then when it hits that threshold, that level, uh, we'll likely see more and more. I think the more and more that I look over some of the data that you guys provide, the more and more I'm convinced that, you know, this is our new normal until at least the end of the year. And then we'll just have to wait and see what 2021 brings. Yeah, that's and that's kind of what we're we're seeing too. We expected a, a slow return to normal, and that's sort of uh, what we're seeing now. Um, but I didn't expect it, obviously, to roll back in a lot of places. We've had a lot of restrictions, some flare-ups of COVID nineteen, and and that whole thing. And and so seeing how that plays out in terms of traffic and people moving around and going to restaurants or, you know, traveling, whether they take a train or a plane or now they drive because they don't want to take those things. So um, that's something that we're going to continue to look at and, and provide more information to, uh, to your viewers. 